one that will speak to your word. Let the Holy Ghost come through on fire in this place. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for your presence in this church. We give you the glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And amen. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. And Pastor read Psalm 40 about trusting God. I, all we know, all of us went through that when you were in probably teenagers or, or high school, you have a lady that you like to, uh, that you like, or crushes. He called that crush. So you admire that lady. So uh, in order for you to to draw your her attention to you, you gotta do something to draw her attention to you. Maybe maybe give her flower. Maybe greet her every day and say hello and give her chocolates. And I know uh, ladies love chocolates and flowers. You know, we love it. We love it when, when a man pursuing us, when a man admiring us, when a man is saying, you're beautiful. <laughs> we love to hear that. We love to hear we are beautiful, we are pretty. You know, we ladies. So when you're pursuing the lady so that you can get attention to her, you do something, you have to do something, do everything you can so that he can, she can get your attention. Amen? That's how. So uh, that's how it is. That's why you, you're courting the lady to know it. This, this for, for the relationship to grow, for the relationship to grow, you have you have to know the person well, and then for us to, to the relationship to grow, we have to know the person well. How? So you have to spend time with this person, amen? You know the person, you have to spend time with the person. You will not know the person if you don't spend your time with him, amen? That's how you know it. That's, that's when courtship starts. Courtship of man and woman, courtship. Just like in the Garden of Eden. There's nothing they can do there but to have fellowship and Adam has to know Eve all the time. They talk and they talk with God. There's nobody else there to talk to but God, Adam, and Eve, right? They have fellowship. They have to know each other for them, the relationship to grow, right? They, they, so, uh, the, 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 the song that we sang, I want to know you more, it's a, by knowing it, it's already in that. We will, we, will, we will know the Lord through His words. Amen? Amen. You will know the word of the Lord by His words. But for uh, for uh, a boyfriend, girlfriend, courtship, or anything, you will not know the person until you live with them. <laughs> you will not know the person until you live with them. And even if you live with them, you don't even know them well yet. You know, you don't even know them well. As, as a, for the first uh, courtship, you were okay. Both of you were okay. That, that you are knowing him. You thought that that's his behavior. You thought that that's her behavior. It's courtship, you know? Until, until uh, uh, the, the relationship is set up, until you live together, and then until, until when you live together, you find out the bad things about him. And you find out the bad things about you. Amen? <laughs> you see, we find each other the bad things to each other when you live together. That means the Lord, I want to know you more. It's right here. You cannot erase it. You will know the Lord who he is with the word of God. Amen? Amen. That's him. That's him. This is him. So every word that he, had, that he said here is true and faithful. He is true and faithful. Amen? The Bible says, let every man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. And God is a true God. God is a true God. So, this is a different thing. So, uh, so, we 
relax things. That's the meaning of Severina in Italy. I don't know about you. You must let the name Boyle, uh, <laughs> Robert, Pastor Robert, Mary, Mary already know it, it's biblical. You must search the name, but the name, uh, and I said Severina, it just don't look, sound good because of the word Severina, it, it means like severe. <laughs> I don't think how to be severe, but I found out that it's an Italian name, Italian name everlasting. So John, the name John means Johanan in Hebrew words. Johanan means God has been gracious. Amen? Johanan in Hebrew words is God is gracious. That's the name of John. So look at John, thir uh, uh, John 13, verse 23. Anyone wants to read that? John 13, verse 23. John 13, verse 23. And it says there, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. <laughs> there was somebody leaning on Jesus' bosom. Right here, whom Jesus loved. And we all know from the beginning, Rebecca loved Jacob. Amen? God loved Israel. Amen? So if you look at it, this disciple leaning on Jesus' bosom, whom Jesus loved. As if Jesus is not just, is, is, not, is has favoritism. Because how come whom Jesus loved? There are 12 disciples. Amen? Does it mean that he don't love his 12 disciples? But this is the disciple whom Jesus loved with, 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 the, with, with the letter D in the end. Love is passion. He loved him. We, we, we come to a point like a question, why he loves John the Beloved? Why Jesus loved, loved John the Beloved? Beloved, beloved. Why do you love him so much? What happened to the other disciples? Isn't it he even said to Peter, Peter, I will give you the key of heaven, of heaven, and you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And he even said to Peter, no one say that I am the Messiah. You're the only one. And then uh, 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 Paul said also that whatever I say in the Bible, Paul said, is a revelation of God to me, of Jesus. Not just a revelation from Jesus, but it's a revelation of Jesus. Amen? So these, are, these are different categories. Does it mean that Jesus don't love God and disciples? Yes. That every one of them have callings, have a ministry to continue, and that is the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. But how come John the Beloved, John the Beloved is different? How come Jesus called him whom Jesus loved? Amen? <laughs> Amen? In a family, your children, they used, to, they used to envy me because they thought that my dad, I am his favorite child because I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's what they thought. They thought that I'm his favorite because I'm the youngest. I'm the young, but John the Beloved is also the youngest in the family. Not in Jesus, but on, 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 his, on his dad. He's a fisherman, and his brother is James. So, so now uh, they thought that I am, I am, I am the favorite, favorite of my dad because I'm the youngest. When it's, in fact, it's not true. It's, I'm not his favorite. All his children is his favorite, amen? But Rebecca, in the Bible, Old Testament, he, she loved Jacob. She has the favorite child. Amen? She said so. If the Bible says so. And God loves Israel. Amen? God loves Israel. Let us point this, this about this thing. My, I have a nephew too that comes once in a while. He, all the time here, whenever he goes to Hollywood, he goes to any kind of part of California, he comes and visits me. Think about it. Why my nephew comes to visit me all the time? 
despite the distance of everything. Because this, this young man grew up with me. Can someone say amen? He grew up with me while his mom is, is working out there in the hospital. I think I think my I, I took my nephew to school, feed him together with my dad and mom, but I am like a sitter to him. I am his babysitter. Now that he's a grown man, he won't forget to visit me and give me a lot of his stuff whenever he's around me. He goes walk me, he goes clean my house. He does what you sow is what you reap. Can someone say amen? So why is he close to me? Because he knows that I was close to him. So God of your love is close to Jesus because Jesus knows that he's close to him. So say amen. If you can see, when, when God of your love reclining on Jesus' bosom, I see him, he is so relaxed. He's like a baby. Amen. <laughs> As if he has no problem. Amen? This is how Jesus loved him. Because he is so dependent on him. Let's go and say amen. A lot of us don't, don't know how to depend on Jesus. In times of crisis, in times of need, in times of trouble, we are, we are, uh, we are relying on our own effort. Can someone say amen? We are relying on other people. Amen? We are relying on our own maximum what we can do. Amen? What what shall I do to solve this problem? That's the question. What shall I do to do this thing? So we are worrying about what we should do. Just like Martha, Martha worries what we can feed to Jesus. Amen? But Mary... Mary is like John the Beloved. Mary is sitting down, not doing anything. Amen? Okay. And John the Beloved is reclining. Amen? Relaxing. Relaxing. They're like resting. But resting in spiritual sense is not inactivity. It means that you have to work so that God provides your needs. Amen? want to look for a job, you have to really uh, go to a newspaper, you have to go there for, uh, physically to apply. Amen? So resting is not in activity. But these two, Mary and Jacob the Beloved, they are, the, the other one is sitting down, the other one is reclining, as if they have no problem. That's what I'm saying. That. As if they have no problem. Mary, Mary is so relaxed. Jack the beloved is so relaxed. That means that they are depending on Jesus. They trust him. That's what Pastor said in Psalm 40. You trust him in everything and anything and everything and any plan that you do. That's all I say, man. You are giving everything. I cast all my cares upon you, Lord, for you carry it for me. He's 
different. Let's read, read at John 21. Let's look at John 21. First is, uh, first is in John 19, verse 26. Say it there. Verse, okay, John 19, verse 26. Look at this. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, here's John, the mother of Jesus and John together, everyone, hallelujah, he turned to his mother at the cross. He said, Mother, behold thy son. Then say it to his disciples. He said it to John the beloved. He said, Behold thy mother. <laughs> hallelujah. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home. He said, John, you take care of my mom, please. Yeah. He said, yeah. Because he trusts, because he trusts Jesus. So Jesus said, I love you. I love you because you trust me. Please take care of my mother, please. I'm a physical mother. That Jesus is done that he loves. He also, because he said, uh, when Jesus never saw the mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. John the beloved, that is the name. The whom he loved. So he said, John, take care of my mother. And my, uh, woman, behold thy son. So now you are replacing me to take care of my mother. Everyone say hallelujah. How many of us are a rare person that we can trust with? Most of us, we trust our own spouse, okay? We trust our husband and wife because the Lord said that you become one. But nowadays, if you look at the story of Samson and Delilah, they, they close friends. The one that is close to you, sometimes they are traitor. They are the one who's villain. They are the one that's traitor. And it happens on the 12 disciples of Jesus. Judas is careless, betrayed Jesus. So as Peter, Peter uh, swear, uh, denied Jesus three times. Can someone say amen? and saying that I don't know him. That's not, I don't know that person. That's what Peter said. You know, that Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus and, and, and Peter denied Jesus. Amen? So uh, let's look at John uh, 20, 20, uh, 21. John 21, verse 20 to 25. Then Peter turned about to the disciple whom Jesus loved foully which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which, which he that is crazy? So this is the uh, scenario. They were walking. And John the Beloved was behind Jesus. John the Beloved was behind Jesus. And Peter is approaching, running to Jesus. Lord, who do you think will betray you? Peter asked. Peter asked that to Jesus. Right there. I'm just reading what the Bible says. Verse 21. Peter, seeing him, say unto Jesus, what shall this man do? See, see how bad this Peter is? Peter told to Jesus, is he the one who will betray you, John the Beloved? Because he told to Jesus, is he the one to betray you, Lord? Peter is so anxious to know who's going to betray Jesus. He doesn't even know that he denied Jesus. Amen? But he's asking who's going to betray you, Lord. And is it is it John the Beloved who will betray you? Verse 22. Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow me thou me. Follow me. It's a, Jesus said, What what is what is your problem, Peter? Even if I tell you that he will leave, even until I return, what what's wrong with you? So what? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, if I tell you that John the Beloved will not die, right? What is it to you? What is your problem, Peter? That's what he said, right? And then, verse 23, then when this say is ab abroad among the brethren. So he gossiped to every, to every people in the community that John the Beloved will not die. That's what Lord Jesus said. See how far it goes? That's not what Jesus said. What Jesus said, what's wrong with you, Peter? If I tell you, if I tell you that he's going to leave even when I return, he's going to leave. You know, that's what Jesus said. But 
should not die. Amen? Yet Jesus said unto him, He shall not die, but, but if I will, if I will, he that carries till I come, what is done to thee? What Jesus said is, if I want him to live until I return, so what? What is it for you? What is your problem? <laughs> I, 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 Until I return, what is it for you? Amen? But Peter said that this man will not die. That's what Jesus said. And that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if I, if I, hallelujah. Sometimes when we gossip, we gossip things that is not correct. Amen? There is a game, there is a game that we gossip, we gossip something. So you say something, to, there is a game, like a circle. When you say something next to your to your to your friend saying that oh brother Doyle said that uh, you're not uh, brother Doyle said that the sun is is ugly, so the other person would say brother Doyle said the sun is ugly. Then the other person will will pass it again that brother Doyle said the sun is beautiful. So you turn around the the gossip or the, oh brother Doyle said the sun the sun looks like you. <laughs> and that's what happened to Peter. Peter said to everyone that this judge of beloved will not die. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if I want him to live, if I want him to live, the word if, if I want him to live, even if I return, what is it for you, Peter? And then <laughs> these things and wrote these things that we know his testi testimony is true. So this is John the Beloved testify who Jesus is. That's what I say, amen. He testified who Jesus is. Every testimony that he wrote in the Bible, John, the Gospel of John, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, right? These are the, the wrote of John. 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation, can someone say amen, is about testimony who Jesus is. Can someone say amen? It's just because he is John the blood, who Jesus loved. Uh, and verse 25, and there are also many other things with Jesus being the which is they should be written everyone. I suppose that even the word itself could not contain the books that should be written Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. We <laughs> come up to end this, this, this subject. So, John the Beloved, can we be like John the Beloved to recline in the bosom of Jesus? Amen. We can. Amen. Mary, we can. We can do too. Mary can, and John the Beloved can also. So, uh, this, this, um, saying that we can be like John the Beloved. And, and um, I'm, I'm just going to say it again. So on, on John 21, verse 20, we see again that Peter approaching Jesus and saying that who, 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 who is going to betray you, Lord? Peter comes to Jesus. Who is going to betray you, Lord? And John the Beloved is behind Jesus. And, and Peter said, is John the Beloved going to betray you? That Jesus love, how can John the Beloved will betray him? When Jesus, whom he loved, and Peter asked, is John the Beloved will betray you? That's in John 21, verse 20. And so Jesus said,
God. We rest everything just like Jonah do. It's requiring in the bosom of Jesus. I know that we have many problems every single day. We have issues in the family. We have issues with our with our money, right? We have issues in our in, we have issues of our health. Amen. We have issues with many things in life. Amen. We have all these issues. But can we be like John the beloved, reclining in the bosom of Jesus? Just like Mary. Because the answer to our problems is in the word of God. Amen? If you need if you need money, it's in the word of God. Amen? If you need help, it's in the word of God. Amen? If you need peace, it's in the word of God. Amen? If you need love, it's in the word of God. That's what we're trying to say. So John the Beloved is, is reclining like I see no problem. Okay, Lord, I trust you. And I know you love me. Jesus loves me. We always remind us to ourselves, Jesus loves me. Look in the mirror every day and say, Jesus loves me. Look in the mirror every day. Jesus loves me. Every, he knows that Jesus loves him, that he will never leave him nor forsake him. So as Mary. That's why they are resting in the presence of God. Because God got them. I got you, son. I got you, God. And someone say, Amen. They are trusting on his word. That's what God is doing. He's different. But he got more revelation from the book of John. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and then the word is made with flesh. And he revealed Jesus who he is. And so the book of Revelation. Amen? Because he knows Jesus. They are close. We, you, in order for you to get close to Jesus, you have to have a personal relationship with him. <laughs> they are close side together. That's the John the Beloved. They are close side to each other. They have personal relationship. He knows him at the cross. He was there. He was there because he knows him. He knows that I love my Savior. He loves me. Amen? To know Jesus, you have to have a personal relationship with him. There's no way you will know somebody if you don't spend time with him. Can someone say amen? Oh, we amen. Amen. That's what happened. When, that's why John the Beloved is spending time with Jesus. They are close to each other. He probably knows all the secrets. Even though uh, God, revealed, uh, God, uh, God, God revealed to Peter who he is, but John the Beloved, they're all the same. All his disciples, he loves them. But, but John the Beloved, he loved them. John the Beloved, he beloved him because he trusts him. He, he, is, he is just a Lord, I, whatever you will, I'm here. I'm here for you. Amen? I trust you. I am depending on you. Can someone say that? We are his dependent. We are his dependent. No matter what we do, we are dependent on, on the money. We are dependent on him. He, God is our source. Amen? If we are dependent on the money. We are dependent on, on our issues in life. Amen? We are dependent on every problem that we have. Can someone say amen? Because the answer is in his word. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's say hallelujah. Let's look at the our last verse, First John 3. Our last verse. First John 3. First John 3. It's amazing how that we were we read about the John 21 when Peter said, Who gonna betray you, Lord? He, he's anxious. It's just the beloved who betray you. He asked Jesus. That is that is funny. That is funny. I found it funny right there. Funny right there. And Jesus said, What's your problem, Peter? Even if I tell you that he's going to leave even when I return, what is it for you? So Peter said to everybody, John the beloved will not die, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if, if I tell you, if I tell you, right? First John 3, verse 20. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First John 3, verse 20 to 23. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Can someone say that? Uh, 
if your heart condemns you, God is greater than what? Don't do our heart. If you look at this sky, I took a picture of this sky one day. The 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 dark clouds is in the bottom. Amen? Amen? And the light, and the light, and the white light, the dark clouds in the bottom, and the light is on the top. I, I look at it that our sin, if our sin is great, God is greater. That's all I say that. If our grace is greater, his grace is greater. If our sin if our sin verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. That's all I say that. Right. If our heart if your heart does not, does not condemn you, then you have confidence with God. Amen? Verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments. And do we keep the abuse of the Whatever we ask, it, whatever we ask, it says again, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Can someone say amen? And it receives it. And this is John the Beloved who wrote this. And verse 23. And this is his commandment. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of Son Jesus Christ. Here you go again. He advertised Jesus Christ again. Can someone say amen? He lifts up Jesus Christ again. We should believe on our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the commandment. Number two, love one another as he gave us commandment. Can someone say amen? This is amen. The love, uh, John the Beloved is an example of grace, grace uh, covenant. So as David is an example of grace covenant. This is, uh, David is it's after man's God's heart. That's what I say now. And God's beloved is, a, is the most beloved disciple of Jesus. They are the grace covenant people. That's what I say now. That we should believe on our Lord Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Can someone say hallelujah? We should do it. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are damned, condemned to die, condemned to go to the pit of hell, to the lake of fire. Can someone say amen? Uh, Th that is a condemnation. If you do not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to the lake of fire, yeah. straight to the lake of fire. Yeah. Because if, if you're just sinning, you still have hope. You can still repent and renew your thoughts, renew your mind, and, be, and repent and become born again. But if you don't believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, there's no, there's no, there's no guarantee you'll die. You're going to the lake of fire when you die. Tomorrow is not a promise. Amen? Whoever don't believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to, to, uh, to the lake of fire. You see, so John the beloved, so what, what I'm trying to tell you, church, is uh, can we be John the beloved oh, that whenever we get, we, we, John the Beloved is as if he don't have a problem. Amen? John the Beloved is as if nothing matters to him. Because he's reclining. He's not a big thing. <laughs> Think about it. Amen? As if he don't have nothing to do about anything. He just reclining. Reclining. If he says, Lord, I depend on you. It's all yours, Lord. I can't do it. You do it. I can have no good problem. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. We know I am, I am depending on you. And he says, I know, Lord, that you love me. First of all, we have to remind ourselves everything we say, Jesus loves us. That's all I say, Jesus loves us. No matter what, no matter who, Jesus loves us. So, so many of us can be like Martha, worry about many things in life. <coughs> Don't worry about anything. That's what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication. That's what the Bible says. So many of us, just like Martha, we worry about many things. We run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, without thinking what Jesus said. Amen? Without, Je without thinking what Jesus said in the Bible, what Jesus has to say about your problem, what Jesus has to say about your finances.
financial problems. What Jesus has to say about the relationship that has been failure to anything. What Jesus has to say about your job. What Jesus has to say about your health. What Jesus has to say about, about, about complaining and grumbling. What Jesus has to say anything about your life. Amen? That's all for you. But like I said, depending on Jesus, it means, it, it don't mean inactivity. Because the man that don't work won't eat. That's what the Bible says. It means that you have to, you have to, uh, what do you say? Faith without works is dead. Can someone say amen? You have to, you have to, you have to, to give, you have a, you want a job? Put your resume, put your resume online. Do something, make something, you want to have some money? Do some kind of business, anything, apply some job. Things like that. Can someone say amen? Oh, Jesus, not because he, he, he's, he's, not, uh, he's not partial and shows no partiality, no. She, John the Beloved is John the Beloved because he knows that Jesus loves me. Amen? That's it. Jesus loves me. He knows that, that Jesus loves him. Amen. Give, let's give the father a